Hi, my name is Alicia Blancabello. I'm a PhD researcher, um, lecturer and early years consultant. I uh, will be doing two sessions uh, for Kimberley uh, based on personal, social and emotional development. My area of expertise and an area I'm truly passionate about is the importance of um, considering emotions in any environment, particularly when working with young children. So I'm going to be talking about why personal, social and emotional development is so important in early years. We need to begin trying to understand what personal, social and emotional development is. When we talk about personal, social and emotional development, we're referring to three crucial aspects of development. And as the um, Early Years Foundation Stage Framework states, we'll read this statement here. Personal, social and emotional development involves helping children to develop a positive sense on the, of themselves and others, to form positive relationships and develop respect for others, to develop social skills and learn how to manage their feelings, to understand appropriate behaviour in groups and to have confidence in their own abilities. If you look through this statement, it is clear that being able to interact with others, being able to find that sense of self-security and connect with others so that we can de develop our own emotional stability is crucial here. So what we're going to be looking at is how we can do that. What is it that um, research says that can help us understand how to support children in this crucial stage of development? Now, let's explore the areas of learning. Since what we're looking at is personal, social and emotional development, we're going to focus on that social emotional growth and how it happens and when it happens as children develop from birth. We could talk about it before birth, but at this stage, let's talk about what happens from birth when those initial neurological connections in their brain start to happen. It is crucial that we expose children to social and tactile experiences that can help them develop those neurological connections. The more children are exposed to social interactions and the more children explore uh, what's out there, the more neurological connections that happen. And it's important that we're there to support that social emotional growth. Let's talk about why observations are so important. Why do we observe children? Well, so that we can support children in the personal, social and emotional development, we need to learn about each child. And observations will help us understand why children interact the way they do, why children try to talk and mix with other children or not, how children demonstrate certain emotions or not. And I like to refer to the research done by uh, Whitmer et al, which uh, mentions how observations are so, so important because they, are, they have to be used so that day-to-day -day interactions and all the occurrences that go on in an early year setting are taken into account so that we can learn to understand children in that particular setting and from then on plan activities and new scenarios that will help children develop their social and emotional abilities further. What I'm going to do is take the statement from the foundation stage framework and I'm going to break it into sections to then give clear examples of how children develop personally, socially and emotionally. Okay, so we're going to start with the first section which says to develop a positive sense of themselves and others. What we need to take into account before we go any further is that if we're looking at those three key words, personal, social and emotional, they have to go together. They are part of a cycle. Now, children can develop personally as individuals when they learn about the world, when they start connecting with the world. Now, sometimes they will start connecting with objects first. They may connect with people at the same time or not. But we have to observe and monitor how that happens. Because what children are trying to do is find their place, find the situations and the scenarios in which they feel more comfortable. So they, it, that means they need to use uh, toys to recreate interactions and social scenarios. Then we must let them do that. We must observe how that happens and what happens 
when they're interacting with toys and objects or when they are simply making those toys and objects become real. That's really important. That's how they begin to develop that positive sense of themselves. Now, when that happens, there might be times when there are also other type of interactions that occur with other children. So they may include other children when they play in or bring in objects um, and toys to life. And that's okay. Now, it might not happen like that. And that's also okay because children are all different. And what we need to do is use our observations to monitor how this is happening. Children need to show excitement and positive emotional responses when they make in things happen when they play in when they making and helping toys interact with each other or when they interact with other children however it happens we need to observe whether there are positive emotional responses when any of these interactions let them be real as they happen with other children or imaginary because they happen with objects and toys Let's make sure that we observe that that positive sense of themselves is occurring through their play and that that then develops into that ability to connect with others. How they feel about others will truly depend on how they've developed that positive sense of themselves. Now the next section is very much linked to the previous one to form positive relationships and develop respect for others. Now I've chosen um, two photographs here. These children look as if they're under three. Um, it is very important because um, it is when children first start having perhaps some of the abilities they need to be part of a social circle. Now, how children develop that positive sense of themselves will then be linked to how they relate to others, how they create relationships. And they will be developing relationships because they know a little bit about themselves so that they can present themselves. Not that they necessarily conscious of this all the time, but when they become part of a social circle, they want others to learn about them and they want to learn about others. Now, what's really, really important to develop that respect for others is that we let children explore their own emotions. When they're interacting with others, when they're showing others who they are, there might be some not so positive emotional responses that occur throughout those interactions. It is our role as practitioners to observe how that happens and not to stop it, but to monitor how we can support children so that they can become respectful and tolerant of others. This is really, really important. Positive relationships will occur when children develop that sense of tolerance and acceptance and flexibility. And from a young age, we can support them with that. And we can support them develop their relationships with others further. The next section is to understand appropriate behaviour in groups. It's very interesting to see how this statement has been written in the Foundation Stage Framework. It has been carefully thought through because when I look at it, I identify the fact that the first part of the statement talks about children develop, developing a positive sense of themselves. It then goes on to learning to develop positive relationships. And then he moves on to understanding appropriate behaviour in groups. So that positive sense of themselves, learning to interact with others, then develops into them understanding what appropriate behaviour when they're part of a group is. Why is it that we need to be inclusive? Why is it that we need to be tolerant like we were talking about before, flexible, acceptable? How do we develop all those skills? We will be looking at uh, later on how Carolyn Sarney uh, talks about the skills of emotional competence that human beings should achieve as they become stronger emotionally. And they are truly linked to this statement in the Foundation Stage Framework. Now I find this section very interesting to develop social skills and learn how to manage their feelings. Now, being able to manage 
feelings is a very complex uh, skill to develop. In fact, uh, sometimes it can take human beings to their adulthood before they manage to totally um, manage their feelings and some people never do. So it's quite complex to be able to do this. Now, when we're supporting children during their interactions with others, we are helping them develop social skills. And that's why the Foundation Stage Framework talks about social skills being really, really important. This, those skills will develop as we support children through those interactions. Now, how children manage their feelings will vary depending on each child. Because each child has formed um, his or her own personality, is forming his or her own personality through life, really. But during those first few years of life, those connections with the world are making them feel strange sensations. Those emotions that come to the surface sometimes and they don't understand are often complex to manage. So that this part of this section, the manage their feelings, is quite complex. Now, when we do uh, session two, I will be talking about um, ideas and strategies that we can use to support children when managing their feelings and how we will have to truly adapt each strategy to the child, to the background of the child, the different types of relationships the child may have with others. We'll be looking at that later on. Uh, but before then, during this session, again, I'll be referring to Karen Sarney, um, Skills of Emotional Competence, and I will be linking those to the early learning goals under personal, social and emotional development. This section talks about having confidence in their own abilities. Now, it's very, very important that for children to develop that sense of self-confidence that sense of self-belief, they have developed a positive relationship with themselves and others. That's why when we observe children, before we set up tasks for them to complete so that they can feel proud of their own achievements, we need to support them so that they learn about themselves and they learn a little bit about who they are. And that can only happen when we offer them opportunities to interact with themselves, with objects and toys, and with other children. Okay, let's discuss why it's so important to understand individual emotional responses. Why, again, observations are so, so necessary in early year settings. Sometimes we can learn very much about what a child is trying to express if we observe their body language and their gestures. Now, I like this statement by uh, Sue Martin that says that an emotion is an internal subjective experience and we can only observe external signs. Now some emotions might be demonstrated and some emotions might not and as we will go on to discuss during session two it's important to understand that children sometimes will be able to express some of the most common emotions, sometimes they will be confused because they can't understand exactly what emotion they're feeling at that particular time. Now, we need to be aware of this. We need to try to understand what each child is trying to tell us with that emotional response that comes from something that has occurred within themselves whilst they're actually spending time interacting with themselves and toys and objects or when they spend in time interacting with others, whichever social circle they're part of. Now we also need to observe how they express themselves emotionally when they show a sense of independence or not. How they relate to others. Are they expressing and controlling emotions? Do they understand how important it is to react one way or another? Is it important to them? Does it mean something to them? We need to observe these things so we can try to understand and support children. Now, skill number two, that talks about others' emotions. So other people's emotions. Let's look at the two descriptors that I found first that I feel fall under this skill. They take account of one another's ideas about how to organize their activity. They work as part of a group or class and understand 
and follow the rules. Now let's look at those two descriptors and let's break down the skill according to Sarni. So skills in discerning others' emotions based on situational and expressive cues that have some degree of consensus as to the emotional meaning. Now this is quite a complex skill to develop as well. I mean, it, ta it could take a very long time if you broke this down into section again, because we may become aware of other people's emotions, but as we meet new people, we need to expand on this skill. So for a child to be able to acquire this skill at such a young age, imagine the type of support that we need to be prepared to offer. Because what we will focus on the, these two descriptors, you know, do children fit into the social scenario of a class? How are they in their interactions? How are they relating to others? How and where do their emotions fit when those interactions are taking place? How aware are they of themselves and others? How familiar are they, they with the fact that it's important to learn to understand their own emotions. This is complex and as we will see as part of session two, we need to find strategies that help children learn to understand by themselves and we need to do this as we teach them to interact with others and to gain self-confidence through their interactions. I'm going to look at um, skills of emotional competence 3, 4 and 5 and some other descriptors uh, under the uh, early learning goals for personal, social and emotional development in the foundation stage framework. Now let's look first at the uh, three skills we have on this slide. 3 talks about the skill in using the vocabulary of emotion and expression so we're saying that human beings should be able to talk about how they feel and should be able to try to listen to how others feel and try to understand how they feel. Now we'll see later how this skill is actually linked to the to skill number four as well. Now what we need to take into account looking at this skill as well is that we all come from different backgrounds, we come from different cultures, we understand that certain behaviours are acceptable or not according to the social background you spend most of your time in. So we need to be accepting of this. We need to try to understand that, that the way we interpret emotional responses may change, may vary depending on that uh, cultural background. Now what is uh, expected as part of the framework is that children can talk about how they feel and how others show their feelings, talk about their own and others' behaviour and its consequences and know that some behaviour is unacceptable. So this, this, this descriptor, although it fits under this skill, what it doesn't specify is how tolerant and flexible and understanding of the cultural interpretations we need to be and I think this is crucial because sometimes we make make judgments on children's behavior because we don't believe that in our cultural and um, social community that is acceptable we need to break that down get to know the child try to understand the child this is what um, the skill that Sane is trying to describe emotions and how we express those emotions can vary and we need to be tolerant and flexible with that. Now skill number four that talks about the capacity of being empathetic and sympathetic through all those interactions with others. It's quite a complex skill to acquire as well. Now the descriptor describes it like this. They show sensitivity to others' needs and feelings and form positive relationships with adults and other children. Now, throughout this descriptor, what we're saying is that children need to be tolerant, flexible and understanding of others. That is being empathetic. 
that is being sympathetic that is trying to understand other children how can we help children develop this skill well remember going back to the statement we talked about at the beginning of the presentation it's really important that we help children learn about themselves we help them understand themselves when they react one way or another in certain situations how is it they feeling why are they feeling like that how are they expressing the way they are feeling only by understanding themselves first and openly talking about their own emotions they will then be able to sympathize and empathize with others skill number five says skill in realizing that inner emotional state need not correspond to outer expression both in oneself and in others i'm going to stop here because everything else part of this statement is actually related to the first part and then i'm going to look at the descriptor they are confident speaking in a familiar group will talk about their ideas and will choose the resources they need for their chosen activities now sometimes children might show confidence speaking in a familiar group they might show that they can talk in front of people they know they might show that they can to explain and, and share their ideas however we need to take into account some of those emotions that they might be experiencing but they don't show because they, again, this isn't a visual image that helps us understand how they're feeling now that will happen as children get older but if we truly know the children we work with we will be able to understand whether there is something underneath a smile, we will be able to understand what they are trying to tell us, what message they are trying to send out when they behave one way or another. This is what this skill says. We're moving on to skill six and seven. Now, skill six talks about the capacity for adaptive coping with aversive and distressing emotions by using self regulatory strategies now let's look at this now that sense of self-regulation that the pilot framework does include and the current framework doesn't as such although i do feel that within some of the descriptors that's exactly what the word what's being said being able to understand oneself and being able to cope in certain situations and use emotions that are going to help us express how we feel now the descriptor says they adjust their behavior to different situations and take changes of routine in the stride adjusting behavior to different situations is complex but as practitioners if we know the children we work with if we understand who they are if we've helped them and supported them so they understand who they are they understand how they feel they're learning to express their own emotions they're learning to find positive ways to respond emotionally we are helping them self-regulate emotionally now skill number seven is linked to the descriptor that says that children pray cooperatively taking turns with others so again it's linked to that being able that ability to relate to each other and create and develop relationships that we were talking about when we uh, broke down the initial statement the skill that Sarni talks about developing says that one has to be aware that the structure or nature of relationships is in part defined by both the degree of emotional immediacy and how that person actually expresses what they're feeling so what this is saying is that even though children may show that they are part of a circle and that they fit in and that they interact within a circle there might be something underneath that that we need to look at as well because they might have learned to cope that doesn't mean that there's true a true positive relationship with themselves and others when they are part of a group we need to observe how that happens 
whether it happens because they understand that it's what's expected or whether it's happening because they actually have the ability to interact in a way that they're tolerant, flexible and understanding. The last skill of emotional competence, uh, according to Sani, talks about the capacity for emotional self-efficacy. Now, it's very difficult to be emotionally stable to the point that um, once emotional experience is stable and balanced, that is quite complex as well because, again, it will depend on what's influencing your emotional responses, what particular situation one is part of, what other people are part of that situation, what social encounters, what those interactions are making you feel, how do you feel within yourself before interactions begin. It's quite a, a complex skill to acquire. In fact, I would say that throughout life, parts of it are acquired and other parts are perhaps dissolved within social contexts. Now, but what I like about the descriptor, children are confident about trying new activities and say why they like some activities more than others, is that it actually talks about how children can express their emotions when they have been part of an interactive social circle. When they complete in activities, especially at this age, they most of the time they're part of a group and they are playing together they are completing a task together so they feel confident about trying these new activities do they how do you know they feel comfortable what how are you using your observations to understand if children are slowly developing that sense of self-confidence and it's really really important because I would say this descriptor if we refer back to the statement that we were looking at when we first then started the session we can see how this statement here this descriptor could actually be the conclusion to the whole statement children will be confident trying out new activities and they will be able to express how being part of what's going on throughout the activity makes them feel because they will have developed that positive relationship with themselves and others because they will be able to understand how to be part of a social circle. I've included here two documents you may want to look at yourselves. One of them is the actual uh, document that's being piloted at the moment and he, he lists the uh, recommended uh, descriptors under the early learning goals. You could perhaps have a go and see if you look at Sarni's um, skills of emotional competence where the new descriptors fit under. How can you link them, link them to those skills? Uh, because what it's important that we understand from this session is that we are helping children develop personal, social and emotional skills for life. Not only those that we need to achieve at the end of the foundation stage, we are helping them develop personal, social and emotional skills for life. There is also another document that I've attached here, which is a document uh, called What to Expect When. It's quite a recent document as well. I would say that it's very much linked to development matters. Uh, but it's, this is also very helpful for parents and families. You may find that you could actually recommend certain sections to parents or perhaps use them during your um, conversations with parents in parents' evenings or if you do any presentations where you talk to parents about how to support children and in areas of the curriculum, etc., etc. I think both documents could be very, very useful for you to read. Next few slides uh, show where I got all the photographs from. It's important to always acknowledge which photographs have been used and where they're from. And here I've listed uh, some of the readings that I've used in the past uh, when I've put together other presentations uh, to support practitioners with birth and social and emotional development. Now, um, 
some of the, these references are, are complex journals, but I still recommend that you, even if you don't read the whole journal, you look at the abstract because you will find it interesting. Um, what I would recommend is the book by Sue Martin, Take a Look, uh, and the book by uh, Woodman et al. as well. Uh, even if you don't read it, it won't go, you don't have to. Uh, they're very, very interesting sources where you can learn to develop your own strategies to support children. Of course, as, as you must have realised throughout this presentation, I'm very fond of the work of Carolyn Sarney, uh, and I would recommend that you um, invest in her book, um, The Development of Emotional Competence. Again, it's quite heavy reading, but you may just want to highlight some sections from it uh, and use it, them as and when you need them. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I have really, really enjoyed putting it together. Um, I look forward to uh, speaking to you during session two where I will be talking about some strategies uh, that I have developed myself or I use um, from other people's ideas and how to help you develop your own and support children personally, socially and emotionally. Thank you.